is Minji, and before I start, I have a question for you all. How many of you here have ever looked at the smartest kid in your class and thought, if only I could have his brains? How many of you here have ever blamed your parents for a short height or a crooked nose? I, for one, is guilty of ever having these thoughts one too many times. Now don't get me wrong, I do not mean to inspire self-hate, no. I am merely pointing out an experience that we all had at least once in our life. That is, wishful thinking about the way we were born. But today, I am standing here to tell you that these thoughts are no longer a fantasy, but a reality on the horizon. Mankind have always attempted to alter the characteristic of a living organism, but it was only recently that a truly groundbreaking discovery solidified. Termed as CRISPR, a professor Dona and her team of researchers developed this technology from a natural defense mechanism found in bacteria. They discovered that they could manipulate the system to cut and restore any genetic material of any organism. The end product was to be an individual that has been modified to appear and to function in a specific manner. Now that may not sound as impressive as it truly is, perhaps even too unethical. So allow me to paint you a picture of how it can be applied. We all know what cancer is, yes? It is a disease that has become so common that according to American Cancer Society, one in three risks developing cancer in their lifetime. The WHO has also estimated around 9.6 million deaths by cancer in 2018 alone. Such statistics seems to prove how desperately we are in need of a reliable solution to this deadly disease. And it is in here that genetic engineering plays a crucial role. In our body is a gene called P53, which codes for a protein that regulates our cell cycle. It is also known as tumor protein as it essentially acts as a tumor suppressor. Mutation of this P53 gene leads to rapid and controlled division of cells, which, in another words, means cancer. However, using CRISPR technology, we can cleanly cut off the genetic defect. The cut can then be restored with a healthy P53, fixing the mutation and ultimately curing cancer. Having suffered this disease myself, I cannot emphasize enough the significance of this technology to us cancer patients and to the society as a whole. When I was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer in 2015, I had to undergo various cycles of chemotherapy. Now, the results were good, thankfully, but I had my own share of near-fatal experiences with side effects. The worst one was a paralysis that was expected to leave the whole right side of my body paralyzed for the rest of my life. Now that didn't happen, obviously, but it frightens me still sometimes, thinking about how close I got to a life in a wheelchair. Physical pain aside, I also had to endure long periods of mental distress which came mainly from the fact that I could put everything on hold for my treatment. I had to stop going to school, I had to stop meeting my friends, and I had to live away from my family, away from the country that I called my home. My time and energy were instead focused solely on enduring my treatment. And it daunted me, watching my friends move on in their life and in academics all without me. It made me feel so isolated. It made me feel so useless. But imagine, with genetic engineering, cancer treatment did not mean the long years of life or death battle as it is now. A simple snippet here and there in our DNA will be all that is needed to cure patients from this deadly disease, all within a few hours, if not a few minutes. Future cancer patients did not know the mental or physical pain of the treatment of today, and their families they did not know the grief of losing their loved ones to the disease. Removing the mutated genes also cures cancer at its core cause. With the specific triggers of the genetic mutations still haven't been identified and unknown, 
Nothing can bring us closer to defeating this disease than this innovative technology. Removing the mutated gene also removes the chances of relapse, which us cancer patients still have to fear even after we have been declared clear of cancer. My point is, genetic engineering will be saving tremendous life, money, time, and effort. But what if I'm to propose to you something bigger, something more revolutionary? What if I'm to tell you that genetic engineering can prevent aging? There are a few things that are fear in life, and one of them is aging. More specifically, I fear the package deal, which includes painful joints, feeble knees, and in most cases, dementia. And it's not a fear that I alone possess, as can be seen by numerous articles published on how to maintain our youth. It reflects the negative attitude of the society to this natural process. But did you know that some organisms are immune to aging, such as lobsters? In fact, researchers have suggested that lobsters may not slow down, weaken, or lose fertility with age. Using CRISPR technology, we can extract the genes giving lobsters these characteristics and swap them for our own age-related genes. This will give mankind considerable control over our lifespan. Now, you may believe that this sounds like a far-fetched science fiction, but believe me, the change has already started. For example, our first GMO food was a tomato that has been modified to have a longer shell life. But the flip side of the coin reveals the ugly side of this technology. As unfortunate as it is, we live in a world where plastic surgeries are already in such high consumption. There rarely is anyone who is satisfied with their own traits that they wish to pass it on as it is. Pass it on as it is. I'm sorry, this is my first time, I'm so nervous. With genetic engineering, as the technology progress and temptation grows, parents will soon be modifying their babies for perfection. For example, if you could give your child that full that color height, why not better metabolism? If you could give your child their full silky hair, why not let it sit on top of a clear, smooth skin? Genetic engineering will be used as a tool to design your own avatar, and hence the term designer babies. Such modification due to vanity reasons will worsen social inequality, as bad as it already is. Babies born under rich parents will be gifted with immunities to various diseases, greater appearance, and great intelligence and charming appearances. Babies born under poor parents will naturally be exposed to unfair competition. They will grow accustomed to the feeling of hopelessness and helplessness as we all do when we are faced with a competitor that we know we simply can't win. So that brings us to the end of this talk with one burning question. So what are we supposed to do with this newfound potent technology? Are we supposed to utilize them, knowing that we are invading God's territory? Or are we supposed to bury them, knowing they will be condemned hundreds and thousands of children to curable, avoidable diseases? Nothing is for sure now, but one thing remains certain. Whatever choice we make, we have to make it as wisely as we can. <laughs>